Good evening. My name is Jose Belisai from the Philippines. Uh, but I'd like to read a couple of short poems from a dear departed friend of mine named uh, Alfredo Navarro Salanga. Uh, like much of the rest of the world, we in the Philippines are uh, cautiously hopeful about the new America that's shaping up under President Obama. But it's probably too soon, a bit too soon to forget about the, the old one that invaded and annexed the Philippines in, 19, in 1898. And this exchange between two generals, an American general and his Filipino counterpart, uh, has to do with that time frame. The General Elwell S. Otis proclaims United States sovereignty over the Philippines in accordance with the Treaty of Paris on December 10th, 1898. By my bidding and mine alone, our eagles commanded to fly over those islands of short brown men. On my shoulders are epaulettes and chevrons of the brightest gold. I come from a golden country. My words are heavy as nuggets. Where they fall, they chip away at what, at what rocks you may have. In brown hand or in brown soul, it will do you no good to challenge the weight of gold. Gold is the heaviest metal. The talons of our eagles are capped with gold. Their beaks are of pure gold. They are trained to gouge out rebel eyes and rip out rebel innards. Brown flesh can never hold. But to you who listen to our golden cries for golden peace, let there be gold between us. Pacify the unlettered. Those of you who have been lettered in Spain, do this and our eagles will look at you as gold and not as brown. Do this and you will eat meat from their golden beaks, meat gathered by their golden talons. Let there be gold between us. And in response, Emilio Aguinaldo, General Aguinaldo, orders the Filipino soldiers in Intramuros to remain on good terms with the Americans in order to deceive the latter since the hoped for moment has not yet arrived. Deception and patience are arts of war. Not all is gunfire and shouting and trumpets. Be like hawks and be like turtles. Walk slowly on land as if weighted down by need to return to wives and homes. But hover in your minds and keep your beaks sharp. Let your eyes be like hawk eyes and imagine where to strike. Remember always the enemy is stranger to coconut, forest, and grass, and knows only stone. Unlike the turtle, the enemy knows no way to hide from heat or eye. Like chicken in open fields, they are easy prey to cleaving. Do not be awed. If they are taller, remember the lesson of the bamboo. In wind and storm, the taller ones bend lower than others. That is the time to cut. In wind and storm is the hoped for moment for turtles to take wings that all may be hawks with beaks sharpened to cut the trunks of bamboo bending in wind and storm. Thank you.